Hey guys, welcome to Programming Knowledge. In this video, we'll be looking at loops. So what are loops? Let's take an example. So here I have a sample program. Uh, this does nothing but just take name and age of a person and then print it onto the console. So what if I ask you to take the data of 10 people? So what you will do is you either execute it 10 times or you just copy the whole thing and then paste it 10 times and just change the name like the name one, name two, name three and so on. So that those are two ways. So what happens when the user decides how many number of times you need to ask him. So what if in the runtime, I'm the user and I and I tell you that I want to store the data of let's say 100 people and you just wrote the program for 10 people. So at that time your program fails, right? So to counter such type of situations and to counter such redundant code, so you are not doing anything practically useful, right? You are just copying and pasting the whole code again and again. So to counter those type of limitations, we have something called loops. So today we are going to look at for loops. So for loops work like a counter based loop. So you have a counter, you have a starting value and then you have an ending value. So the loop goes from the starting value to the ending value. That's how for loop works. So the syntax is you write for and then you have a starting value of a counter and then you put a semicolon and uh, in between you put a condition. So this condition is actually the loop condition. So what happens is the counter is actually checked with a condition before going ahead. So for every time the counter value is checked or is compared with some value so that it stays true. So this condition should stay true for the whole loop to execute. If it fails, the loop is going to break and then uh, the control goes over to the next statement which is out of the loop. So for the loop to execute, this condition needs to be true and the way you grow this uh, starting condition, you cannot stay over there, right? So if you just put the starting condition in the loop, this is also a for loop only, but what happens is there is no growth condition, right? So the starting value stays the same and this condition also is always true. So this loop will be going on forever. So that type of loop is called an infinite loop. So the easiest way to create an infinite loop is you just put two semicolons, this becomes an infinite loop. So because there is no starting value, there is no condition. So this becomes an infinite loop. What you do is you just define some value over here. So this makes it as an infinite loop. So infinite loops are bad. You don't want your program to keep executing the same set of statements again and again and again. The user gets bored, right? So you want to end it after a certain number of times. So what you do is you put a counter and then you put a condition and you put an increment value. So you increment the counter or you, you basically increase the value of the counter so that at some point this condition becomes false and the loop breaks. So that's what you're going to do. So let me write a small for loop over here. So what you're going to do is for and then for the counter variable, I'm going to initialize it inside this. So there is something called a scope. So what happens is I can even do like this also. I can put an i over here and I put i equal to zero, something like that. That also works. But what happens is this particular i will be used in the whole program. I mean in the whole scope of the main. So we'll talk about scope in a separate video. For now, it is best to use counters inside the loops itself. Because once the loop ends, the counter gets out of the scope and it is deleted automatically from the memory. So it's best to use counters as a local variable. We'll talk about what are local variables, global variables when we're talking about scope. We'll definitely do that in, in another video. So for now, we are just going to write for i equal to zero. So that is the starting value and I want to execute it 10 times, right? So for how for 10 times, I'm going to check. So let me start from one that becomes easier. So many times you will be starting uh, your, uh, your counter from zero. There's a reason for that, that we will understand when we are dealing with arrays or something. Generally, computer counting starts from zero. So for now, we'll start from one. And then suppose we want to go till 10. So when will the condition fail? When we go for a number, we are growing this number, right? So 
let me not write the condition right now i'll just put the growth rate so i equal to 1 so i'll just do an i plus plus i talked about this increment operator right so what this does is it just increments the value of i from uh, by one unit so if it is one it becomes two and then it becomes three and so on so now this i will go on incrementing it will go till the range of uh, the integer that is some 2 power 32 something like that and then it again cycles back it again goes to minus 2 power something so this loop won't end at all because there is no ending condition for this so to end this loop i want to execute it 10 times so that condition will fail only if i becomes greater than 10 so till the value of i is less than or equal to 10 execute this loop once it is greater just break out of it so here you put a brace so these braces as i told you uh, signify a block of commands so this block represents the for block inside this whatever you write is going to be executed this many number of times it depends on this condition in this set of conditions so here instead of writing all this i'm just going to put the number itself so let's just put an i over there because uh, we don't want the whole set of statements getting confused here. So let's just put i over here and then I'll just put a new line. So end l and a semicolon. So let's now execute this f9. So here if you see you have all the numbers from 1 to 10. So that is because of this. So what if I put less than 10? Less than 10 is when it goes to 10 it's going to break right. So now you know the output it's going to come till 9 so f9 so here you have numbers from 1 to 9 um what happens if i remove this condition as i told you you will be going into an infinite loop so what it feels like it it feels like something like this so you can see it's just going on increasing it went to 4000 5000 6000 it won't stop it's just going on just printing the numbers just because I don't have a stopping condition, it doesn't know where to stop. It's just going on, going on. It goes up to that whatever that value is, it's 2 into 10 power 9 or something. And then it's eventually going to cycle back and this process will continue. It's going, never going to stop. So to stop such a loop, you can either directly close this or press Ctrl C, it's going to stop. So this is how you use for loop in C++. Uh, there are pretty other type of uh, usages as well. So Instead of putting the counter here, as I told you, you can put it over here. So if int i equal to 0, and then here I'll just put a semicolon, and then I'll just put the condition over here, and then i++. plus plus. So what this will do is, it is automatically understood that I'm using i as my counter, and once it goes up to 10, it's going to stop. So it's just going to give me the same output. It's going to give me 1 to 10. And uh, what if I, uh, you cannot remove this condition because once you, remove this condition uh, the loop is going to be infinite and one other thing you can do is you can put this thing inside here so this also does the same thing only thing is that this statement becomes the uh, statement of the loop these statements are executed in an order so what happens is first this statement is executed let me number them down so first this statement is executed then this statement is executed so all these statements whatever is inside the block then this statement is executed let me number it as 3 and then it is checked over here so this check is performed at the last so once if it is true it is going to again go there and again this condition uh, this statement will execute then this check will happen and then again if it is true this loop will continue that's how it goes Another thing you can do is you can actually omit the condition also. There is a way to actually stop the loop without the condition also. What you do is you just put two blank semicolons and then to stop I will write if uh, that particular i is greater than or equal to 10 So or sorry greater than 10 because once it is greater than 10 I mean once the i goes to the value of 11 the loop should stop right so what you do is you just break remember this break we use in switch case statements that's the same break this is actually a jump statement so this is how it is used for breaking out of an infinite loop for breaking breaking out of a loop at a particular point of time so we will be talking about these jump statements in our next video so this is how break works you can you also have continue so that we will be talking about in the next video and now I'll just increment the value. 
So here, this is the same exact loop. So if you just execute it, you will be getting the output. So here you have one to 10 numbers. So here, uh, see, because uh, I have put zero over here, so I just change it to one. Here you have numbers from one to 11. Now, why did this happen? That's because I checked after printing this. So that's a logical mistake. That's not the fault of the loop. I just forgot to put it before printing it. So once it goes to the value of 11, it should break, right? So if it is less than, uh, sorry, if it is less than or equal to 10, then only I should print. So first I need to check if it is not greater than 10, if it is less than or equal to 10, then only I need to print. So this loop will execute as expected. So this is how you use for loops. In the next video, we'll be talking about while loop. Till then, happy coding.